Okay, so this guy just weighed in at seven pounds. And now we're going to go through and do the butchering process. I only have enough bags left to do five today. Or, well, zip ties. I'm going to have to order more zip ties. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and butcher, and then we're, I'm going to do a pose after. So I'm going to try to get this camera set up properly because um, it is a butcher day. So little parrot here, um, I do cervical dislocation. I um, snap the necks, immediately slit their throats or decapitate them. I bleed them out, then I skin them, gut them, and we put them in a, a, a cold water bath to cool the meat down as quick as possible, and then it's going to be bagged into the freezer. So I am going to do five, let them soak for a bit in the cold water. I'm currently bleaching a bucket. I'm going to rinse that out real good, and then I'm going to fill it with cold water. Um, but you want to make sure it's sterile to begin with because you don't want to contaminate your meat. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick walk through of this process as quickly as possible. goes behind the neck and you want to real quick and then get in here and get that off for a bleed out so head is separated from the body wiggling is normal that is effectively completely decapitated I'm gonna go ahead and let that bleed out Give that a second to bleed. Let it slow down. Okay? You can see that happen relatively fast. Okay, so the next part of this process for me is getting them on the, the, the gamble. I've a, just made a quick wire one out of um, 12 gauge wire here, which is good enough for doing rabbits. If you can get a properly sized ones, do it. For me, it's simply find that heel joint and you just pop the wire through. So take a look at the camera can see it. And this is a little bit deeper. Grab it. So if you can't get it to pop through you can also just wrap it around like you got it. So there we go. So get that wire through. I like to wrap it around the foot base so it doesn't go anywhere. I do the same on this side. It's getting right in between. There's a meaty part between the tendon and the bone at the back of the foot. So you want to just find a soft spot and go all the way through. Like I said, when I get a little older, there we go, sometimes the skin gets a little thicker, and I just wrap that around like so, alright, and that's how you get them hung. Knife is dirty, I keep, uh, I keep wipes over here to wipe stuff off, so I'm going to clean that knife off real quick first. And then I go from top down. Um, people, different people do this differently. If you can get a stiffer thing or put a, a longer fitting in there, it kind of helps keep the legs spread. I'm probably going to readjust this at some point. So what I like to do, and I do, I do keep the hides, I like to pinch some skin up and then I go sideways just to make that initial incision, get that hole going. There's different ways to do this, depends on how you want to keep your, your floof. All right, and then once you get in there, I like to tear a little bit of a hole without popping the uh, interior cavity. You notice there's a lot of warmth in here. Um, and then I like to feel first. You can do this with or without gloves on at this stage. Um, I like to make a hole going up separating the skin up to about the joint and then I will feed the knife up because I do a Y 
when I'm skinning usually. So feed the knife up and pull. That opens up one leg. Repeat that on the other leg. Again, find the spot up there, an open cavity. Just feel up underneath the skin. Alright, there we go. Get that hole. Feed that knife up in there. Try to avoid cutting any meat. And just, there, rip that skin open. This guy's got some nice nuts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim a little bit this connecting tissue because this was an older rabbit because I have customers that want much larger carcasses. So I let these guys grow out a bit longer. So I'm gonna actually do a little bit of separating in here first. And then similar to legs, just glue with your fingers, kind of separate some of this body cavity out. And then again with the And I'm gonna go ahead and pull it all there. So now, now we have the rabbit open. We have some connecting tissue. I'm gonna go ahead and trim up just gentle slices on that connecting tissue to get that to pull away. Uh, I am gonna go all the way down on this one, right between the legs. Like I said, larger rabbits a little bit. Take a little more work. The uh, smaller fryer size. Okay, so sometimes you want to just get a hole so you get in here, make a hole about here, and just get that little bit of floof. And then it, it comes off pretty easy once you get it started. You just pull right on down. Um, for the butt, what I usually do is I'm just going to leave the tail and the anus on for right now. I'm going to trim that later. So what I like to do is get as much as this around the back as possible. I'm just gonna with a bit fatter rabbit. So you see you wanna get through here. Once you got through, you wanna loosen as much of this off as possible. And then I like to just kinda grab up around here. Again, get as much of that loose as you can. And then I just Try to get that around the tail as much as I can, as much as that off, expose the tail. And I just cut the tail off. There. So now that's free. You take the hide and it just peels like this. So I just go ahead and peel the rest down, uh, work over where that incision was at the neck. Work it all the way down to those paws. At this point, pull it out as much as possible. Pelt's now pretty much off. Um, and I find it's easiest just getting a pair of Lyman pliers. I'm going to be doing this real low anyway, and this is all going to get washed. So I go ahead and I crimp the wrists here, breaking that. And same on the other side. The, hole, the big hole for the Lyman pliers is on the bottom, so the Pull apart sticks in there because you want as little of this to touch the meat as possible. Alright, go ahead and get that good and crimped so the bones are broken. And then I just come back and trim that off. So now it's just a matter of trimming. Alright, if you're not planning on keeping um, the head for any reason, I'm just going to go ahead and the head off here all the way so that's that's done he was a good boy but you know um, I'll leave this Bernie will either take care of him later or the, the chickens will and then uh, for skinning purposes I'm going to open the pelt up all the way so I'm just going to trim that so it's, it's open push little feet back in and then uh, this goes in the freezer until I have time to, to work it. So that's a nice big, nice big uh, steel pelt. Um, to save these, you roll them into each other. 
it's a nice cool day out. We don't have any bugs, so I have a, a second. I'm going to go take care of this, uh, put this in a bag, and then we move on to the gutting. Now, like I said, I rinse these, so um, we've already gotten the, the, that off. We do an initial rinse and cool down. Just to get as much of that hair off as possible and, salt, and start to cool down the carcass. If you're interested in uh, the rabbit anatomy, go ahead and So, rabbit anatomy wise, right? These are the testicles. So, as you can see, that's a it's a buck. Uh, penis is right here. That's the penis. These are the testes. What I'm going to do is make an incision down here and I'll show you the next part. Okay, once you get them open, you're going to see the bladder, which is that right here, filled with some urine, and your guts. So, for the bladder, what I like to do to remove this, I like to pinch it off at the top. You can either pull it out or cut it out. I usually cut it as close to the top, so I'm going to do that next. Um, and then I'm going to go through and we're going to uh, kick the guts into the bucket. And then we're going to um, check for anything weird. Right now we have what looks like pretty healthy kidneys. You, you basically want to do a mini um, uh, narcopsy every time you, you butcher a rabbit. So, yeah, it looks like pretty healthy kidneys. Liver looks good from what I can see thus far. You want it, you want it to be that like nice, you know, pink color. Ideally, no spots. And we're going to pull it out all the way and look to see if we do see any spots. This one looks like we do have... Uh, like one small coccidia cyst on there. So we're going to toss the livers. If I see any spots at all, we toss them. It's not terribly bad, but it's not ideal. Um, yeah, generally the liver is pretty clean. It's still not edible because there's a couple spots on it. And coccidia has been really, really bad this year. And this guy's been around since we had our outbreak. So it's kind of expected. So it's probably inactive cysts, um, but they're still there. So I, I wouldn't eat it. Uh, guts look pretty healthy. You know, they're not, don't look bloated. They don't have any weird colors to them. Got a little bit of fat on there. Again, intestines look pretty healthy. So that's all good. You can actually just chew fly. Um, I'll just take and pull all that out. Now, generally, that liver's pretty healthy. Um, this is the stomach. Again, you're, there's, no, there's no bloating or anything. This was generally a pretty healthy animal, which is good. I'll leave that to the chickens. All right. I have opened up the chest cavity. I popped the diaphragm. We're going to examine the lungs. Those lungs are nice and pink and healthy. Heart, everything else looks normal. So again, mostly pretty healthy animal. And then uh, I'm going to finish pulling all this out and then uh, start doing cleanup. Remember, a lot of the questions all people ask is how do you deal with, with this part? So what you want to do first is you're going to grab the thighs with both hands, one on this side and one on this side, and you're going to snap them open. And then you stick your finger, finger up in there. Well, ideally, you stick the knife up in there, pull it forward, and open this. And then you stick your finger up there, and I stick it up, grab it, and yank the uh, the anus out, um, trying to keep any of that uh, poop away from, from the carcass. And then I immediately rinse. I'm going to try to show that as best I can. Here, Okay, so I said here, I'm going to grab on both sides. You want to you snap the pelvis, so... What I'm doing is I'm on both sides, and I just there, snap that, and then uh, you come up in that cavity, that hopefully you've got it snapped, and just take that knife up and open it, and then you should be able to get your fingers in, and grab and scoop all that out and if you're lucky your hands are still clean and then you just yank off the testicles trim off any other extra organs without damaging too much meat and there you got completely clean
Okay, and that was done successfully. Um, we try to do some pick around clean as much as possible. You see, I was able to snap the, break the bone at the ankle, so it's much cleaner. It's not as jagged. And now I'm going to go ahead and take a picture of this as a, a posed hard cull, so you can compare it to the before pictures.